Okay, so Kal Kadosh, we're continuing now with Daf Lamed He Amud Aleph. So Daf Lamed He Amud Aleph comes and it says as follows: Bechilufa bechalta. The hefech, the opposite, is to do the kaveret. What are we talking about? We're talking about Dama Rabba Rabba says chalta, which is a kaveret, a beehive. So it says bat tre kure. If it's made to fit two kurs inside of it, shari de tetuli you're allowed to carry it on Shabbat. Why? Because then it's considered a kli. It's considered a utensil. But tzlata kule, if it's going to be three, three kuls, asur taltala, you're not allowed to carry it. Why? But since it's so big, it's not normal to carry it even during the weekday. So therefore, it's not considered like a utensil to start carrying it from one place to another place. Rav Yosef says, but tzlata kule is also going to be permitted. However, but arba kule asur. It's going to be four, it's not going to be, it's going to be asur. So from here, we're just learning an entire concept to do with, of, um, of, uh, you know, what is considered a utensil or not a utensil in order to carry it on Shabbat or not, okay? So Amr Abayi, Abayi says, Bamin and the more, once I ask Rabbah, am I allowed to actually uh, carry this kaveret or not? So he said, Bishat Maaseh, right, when I actually want to, Bafil Bat Trekur Loshali, even when there was two cores, he didn't allow me to carry it. So Kiman, so who's this going like now? So he says, Kaitana, like this Tana, that it says, the Tana we learned in the Mishnah, Kaveret Akash, we are talking about a Kaveret a beehive, which is made out of kla, kash, which is made out of like straw. The Kaveret Akanim are made out of reeds. Ubor, right? Or it's, there's a, a pit, right? Ubor. Of a Sfina Alexandrit, which is basically a, a, a boat from Alexandria, which is going for long periods of time. Afal Pishishlam Shulayim, even though it has like a, a, the rim around it. Ve'en machzikot arbaim se'a belach. And it could hold 40 se'ah, right? Shehen kuraim, which is two kuraim, yavesh. Teorim, it's going to be tahor. It's not going to be mekabel tumah. Why? Because these things which are made out of wood, right? So since they have 40 se'ah or 60 se'ah in, in, in uh, dry, so it says it's not normal to carry it. So since it's not normal to carry it, that's why it's not going to be mekabel tumah, because it's not a keli. So since it's not a keli, because it's not normal to carry it, that's why. So it comes out, that when Abaye came and he said that he asked Rava, and Rava didn't permit him to carry even a kaveret of two kurs, it was going according to this opinion that two kurs already was enough to be considered a, an object you don't move because it's not going to be mekabel tumah. Okay? So Amar Abaye, Abaye says, Shema Mina, we learn from here, Hai Gudsha, right? Til Tahave. This, um, Something which is good, which is Godesh Hashel Me'al Piyakli. It's on top of the utensil. How does he translate Gutsha? Gutsha. Gutsha, that the heap, the heap of the solids. It's like, it's like on top. Basically, have a utensil. Many times you could fill it up to the top. So many times when you're filling it up to the top, what happens is, is that you're allowed to, um, the, the, it's, it's, it's a third, which means when you're going to fill it up, it's going to have a third of everything that the utensil actually has, which is interesting. I mean, basically if the utensil could hold 40, so that's why we said that it could hold 60, because you could add a third to the heap on the top. So, for example, what, we're obviously talking about dry, obviously, right? So, whatever we have, right, the heap on top of it could be one third on top of it. So, so once, okay, it happened that Abaye saw Rava, that he saw him on Erev Shabbat, that he was looking to the west in order to see if it was becoming nighttime, okay? Amalei, he told him that time we learned. Why are you looking at the west? You're supposed to look at the east, as long as the east is still red. Amalei, he said, You really think it's the Mizrach Mamash? No, it's not like that. We're talking about that it's Pnei Marav, which was the Pnei Marav, which that's where the sun is setting, is lighting up the, the Mizrach, meaning that when I want to come and I want to look, I'm not going to look to the east. I'm looking to the west. Remember, the sun rises in the east and goes down in the west. So when it comes up in the east, it goes down in the west. I'm not going to look at the Shkia time towards the east. I'm going to look towards the west. Because in the west, that's what's shining towards the east. So that's where I'm looking. 
Ikadami, that those that say it was the opposite. Rava saw Baye that he was looking to the Mizrach. Amale, he said, Mizrach, do you really think it's written in Mizrach Mamash? Panim Madamin the Mizrach, it's really the West. Okay, the Simanach, right? And what is the Siman? Kabta, the Chalon, which means where's the light coming from? The Ora Chalon, the light of a window, is going to come from the Kotel Shekinegdo, which means it's always going to be from the other side. Okay, Afilu, which means even if the, the sun is not in that direction of the wall, still it will always be opposite. So too, just like by the window, okay, it's always going to shine on the wall, which is opposite of it. So too, when it says, they're going to do the Peremizrach, which is opposite of it. Okay, even though Shaka from before. So therefore, that's why, that means basically, when you have a window, Right? The window is always going to shine on the wall, which is in front of you. Right? It's always the opposite wall. Even if the sun is not even there on that side, even if the sun is going to be on another side, it doesn't matter. The sunlight will come in and will shine on the wall, which is opposite, not the wall where the window is. Okay? Next, Reb Nechemia says, We're talking about in order that a person should walk, right? That he should go from Shkiyata Chama half a mean. I remember, half a meal is nine minutes. Amar Rabbi Hanina says, Rabbi Hanina, Harotzel Eda Shiuro Shel Rav Nechemia, if you want to know the Shiuro Rav Nechemia, Yani Achama Berosha Karmel, leave the, the, the sun when it's at the top of Hara Karmel, okay? And then Yered, go down, the Itbol Bayam, go down to the river, to the right, go do the, in the sea, do Tevila, Viale and come back. And that is a Shiuro of Rav Nechemia. Okay, so Amar Rabbi Chia, Rabbi Chia says, if you want to see the bear of Miriam and Aviyah, right? Wow. The Nachala, the Askara of Miriam and Aviyah was just three days ago, on the 10th of Nisan. That's why we don't, we never do Shabbat Agadol, is always Shabbat. It's never on the 10th of Nisan, even though that's when it came out this year as well, because since it was a, a, the bad thing, or not a bad thing, but basically it was like a, a sad story that Miriam and Aviyah passed away on the 10th of Nisan, so therefore we never want to commemorate Shabbat Gadol is always with the Shabbat and not because of the 10th of Nisan when it actually occurred. Remember, this year, Pesach came out, comes out the exact same way that it came out when we left Mitzrayim. Okay? And we have all the plagues as well. We have, uh, they were sending out videos of the, all the fish coming out of the sea, right? And they were all uh, dying on the, on the front of the sea. Right? Then you had another one, which is basically the entire, also you had a, how do you call it? The Makat Dam in Italy, when the wine right, was uh, broke, right, and it came into all the pipes, so they were opening up their, the water and it was uh, all red coming out. Then you had the wild animals coming all around, so you have mamash, you have the ten makot, you have everything, everything coming, just like it was when we were in Yitzhak Hashem, Hopefully we'll have Mashiach on this Pesach as well, the night of Pesach. Okay? So it says, Amen. yeah, if you want to see Be'erash al Miriam, I'm sure there's more, but we just have to look for them. I know because they're just sending out all the phenomena which are coming out, and those are just three different things which are very, very interesting. Right? If someone wants to see the Be'er of Miriam and Aviyah, go up to the Rosh Karmel, and you're going to look towards the sea, and you're going to see it. Because you're going to see like a Sela Gol, right? A round rock, like a Nafa, Bayam in the sea. And that is the Be'er of Miriam. Amar Rav Rav says, Mayana Mitaltel Tahor, he says, no, it's not connected to the ground, which means it moves around. So therefore, it's, it's not connected. It goes around, and therefore, it's going to be the bed of Miriam. Amar of Yudam. The Arizal said that the Dveria, the, 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 the lake of Dveria, is the water of Be'er Hashem Miriam. Right, and they say that it's inside of it, correct? Not the entire right. right. It's right. inside of it, like it's there. Yeah. Right. The Kineret, no, that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So he says now like this. He says... The Benash Mashot of Rabbi Yehuda, the Kohanim are allowed to do Tevila, and then they're allowed to eat Truma. Remember, if we're remembering now Brachot, Dafyumi, the, they're going to come and they're going to do Tevila. So they do Tevila when they became Tameh, Tvul Yom, and then they're allowed to eat during the nighttime. Okay? So Leman, according to this call, like, if you're going to tell me it's Rabbi Yehuda himself, that they're allowed to do Tevila Benash Mashot, he says, one second, I thought he said it was a Safekhu. So since it's a safek, that's why they're going to do the tevila. Ela, but rather, ben ashmashot of Rabbi Yosei koanim tovim bo. He says we're talking about ben ashmashot of Rabbi Yosei. Okay? 
So Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi, uh, sorry, it says it's Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yehuda that Rabbi Yosef Kohanim to Limbo. So according to Rabbi Yosef, the Kohanim are allowed to do Tevila in that, in that case. Okay? So he says, Pshita, obviously. So it says, like, I would have thought to say, Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yosef, Meshach Shaykh of Rabbi Yehuda. I would have thought that the Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yosef goes by Rabbi Yehuda as well. Kamashvalan comes to teach you the Shalim Ben Ashvashot, right? The Shalim Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yehuda. That it's going to finish the Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yehuda, the Hadar Matchil Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yosef, and then it's going to start the Ben Ashvashot of Rabbi Yosef. So Amar Rav Chanan, Rav Yochanan, Halachas like Rabbi Yehuda to do a Shabbat, and Halachas like Rabbi Yosef to do a Truma. Okay, so says the Gemara, it's good that Halachas like Rabbi Yehuda on Shabbat it makes sense the Chumra, because we're always going to go to Chumra. Remember, Rabbi Yehuda was the earlier time, Rabbi Yosef was the later time, because Rabbi Yosef just says it's Keherifayin, it goes in and out in one second, so it's much much later. So it's, it makes sense to pass in the Kabbalah on Shabbat, that's fine. But Linyan Truma Mahi, what does it mean that we're passing like Rabbi Yosef to do Truma? If you're going to tell me to do Tevila, it's a Sfeka, it's a Sfek. So why are you being lenient? Okay, Lamed Hayam Ubet, Ela Lachila Truma, but rather you're eating Truma. The Lo Achli Kwanim Truma, the Shlim, Ben Ashoshon Vizir, the Kwanim are not allowed to eat Truma until they finish, right? The, the Truma, until they finish the Ben Ashoshot of Rabbi Yosef. Okay? Next. I'm going to read the Meshuan. It says the Meshuan. Kochav Echad Yom. Shnaim ben Ashvashot. Shlosha Laila. When there's only one star in the horizon, so then it's going to be considered daytime. If there's two stars, it's ben Ashvashot. It's twilight. If there's three stars, it's for sure nighttime. Tanyam Yachir also went to the right. Kochav Echad Yom. When there's one Kochav, it's daytime. Two of them, it's going to be ben Ashvashot. Three of them, it's going to be nighttime. Amar Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef says, "Lo kochavim gedolim anini biyom, lo kochavim gedolim that are seen during the daytime, and lo kochavim ktanim that are not seen in the daylight, not kochavim ktanim that are not seen in the nighttime, but rather the benonim, which means the middle ones. Okay, but still, even though there's middle ones, you still need to see the small ones to know which ones are considered the middle sized ones." Amar Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Zvida says, "Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Zvida, how say melacha bishne benashvashot? If a person does melacha in both benashvashot." Chayev chatat miman hashach. He's for sure chayev chatat. So again, one more time. Ben Ashrashot of Erev Shabbat, which means between sunset and nightfall. And Ben Ashrashot of Motzei Shabbat, between sunset and nightfall. If somebody did a melacham, both of them, for sure he's going to be chayev chatat once. By miman hashach, because one of them had to be nighttime, whichever one that you wanted to say it. Okay? So we go like the kochavim? We go like the kochavim, yes. Okay. We go like the kochavim, but they have to be benonim. So the Mishnah Bura explains that you still have to have uh, the, the smaller ones in order to know what are Benonim. Because maybe the three that you're looking at are really the, the big ones. So because of that, it's a, it's a problem. Okay. Okay? So, Amar le Rava Lishame. So Rava comes and he says to his Shamash, Atum de la Kim Lechu B'Shiura de Rabbanan, by you guys that you're not experts in the Shiurim of the Chachamim, Right? When the Shemesh is Berosha the Galim, Atlu Shaga, you light the candles. And you don't start putting yourself in Speko because you don't know the Simanim of the rabbis. So don't go, what happens if it's a cloudy day? Right? I understand it. As long as the sun is still up there, make sure you light the candles when the sun is still up. Perfect. But what about during the, day, in the cloudy day? I don't know where the sun is. It's cloudy. So it says, In the city, look at the Tarnegol. Why? Because the Tanegolim, they sit on the, on the walls towards the end of the day. And that's when you know to stop working. The Dabra, if you're in the fields, that there's no uh, Tanegolim. Orve, look at the Orvim, the Orev, the ravens. Right? Because they, they start gathering together on the, in the Ilanot. Then you know to stop working. Inami, or if you want, you could end, have another thing. Look at the Adeane. It's a type of a, of a plant that the leaves start going towards the sun. So the morning goes towards the east and the nighttime goes towards the west. Does it tell you what type of a plant it is? Uh, a, a wild gourd. A type of wild gourd. I don't know what it is. Wild gourd. I don't know. Okay. Fine. So therefore, you look at the leaves. The leaves are going to go to the east and then to the west in the nighttime. Tanur Rabbanam, we learned in the Shesh tkiot tokin of Shabbat. There's six tkiot that they start doing tkiot shofar. Tu, 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 right? of Shabbat. It says, Shesh Tkiyot Tukulim of Shabbat. The first one, Lavtit Melachash B'Sadot. The first one, they used to do Tkiyat Shofar in order to stop the people in the fields from working. The second one, Lavtit B'Yiv Chariot, to stop in the city 
and to stop the stores. The third one, to start lighting the candles. These are the words of Rabbi Natan. Rabbi Yudan Asiyomer, Shlishit was to take off Tfilin, to make sure you took off Tfilin during the day before Shabbat, because you're not supposed to have Tfilin on during Shabbat. The Shohei Kedet Sliyad Dag Katan, for one second, but these are all, this is number one, two, and three. What about the rest? Okay, I guess we're going to speak about it afterwards. Then it says, The Shohei Kedet Sliyad Dag Katan, O Kedet Lad Pik Papa Tanur, Ah, and then here again, the Tokea Omeria Ve Tokea Ve Shovet. And then what you do is, is that after you wait, after the Tkiya Shlishit, you wait the time that it takes to roast a small fish or in order to Lad Bik Pat Matanur, to put the bread on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the oven in order to bake. And then you do Tkiya Tkiya Ve Shovet, and then you stop, because then it's already time of Shabbat. So those are the last three. Amar Rabbi Shabbat Gamliel, Mana Salelelelem Lebavlim, Shetukim, Urim, Shoftim, Nitoch Munim. It says, what are we going to do to the Babylonians that they're going to do tkiya, trua tkiya, and they stop with the minim? Ah, that means they wouldn't do tkiya, trua, trua tkiya. They would do tkiya, trua, and they would stop with the trua. So he says it's not good. Why? Tokinu marim, so then it's only going to be five. If you do tkiya, 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 trua, that's five. You have to do three at the end. Tkiya, trua, tkiya. So ela, but rather, tokinu chuzim, tokinu marim, the shoftim, they used to do Kiat kiat trua, right? And they used to stop with the trua at the end. So he says, minhag avot emidein. So says the Gemara, one second, but they have a minhag. The minhag is the minhag. So therefore they do their minhag of their mesorah and they continue. Okay? Mat nila Rav Yehuda la Ritzchak bere, right? So Rav Yehuda taught Rav Yitzchak his son, the shniya was still la likataner. Not the third one la likataner, but rather the second one was still be la likataner, to light the candles of Shabbat. Nowadays in Israel, they don't use Kiyot, they use uh, the music, right? They put on the music, and that's how they know that they're supposed to like the... Again, but technically, they do it in Yerushalayim 40 minutes before, but that's Rosh Nazim. Because according to Sfaradim, you could do it either half an, hour, half an hour before or 20 minutes before. Says the Gemara, Keman, so who does this go like? It's not going like Rabbi Natan, not like going like Rabbi Yudan Asi. Because Rabbi Natan says that Kiyah was three times, the third one on, on Halakat Nirot, and according to Rabbi Yudan Asi, right, it was the fourth one was, was Halakat Nirot. And now you just said that it was the second one. So what's going on? Which kia was for the lighting of the candles? The second one, third one, or fourth one? Okay? So it says the Gemara, right? Ela, shlishit la likatanen. The third one was to light the candle. And Keman, who's that going like? It says, kirbi natan, la kirbi natan. Tana de Bishwal, we also learned in the right. Tana shesh kiyot kori of Shabbat, they light three, six times on Erev Shabbat. And it says, itchil itkiyot kiyad yishonani no omni masadem iloored. The first one was for the people in the fields. They're going to stop whether it's going to be digging or doing, a, you know, reaping or all these things, right? Or uh, plowing, things like that. The closer ones are able to come in until the further ones come in. And then everyone come, on, come in at the same time in order that, you know, people are not going to suspect that the ones that are far away are still doing and Shabbat. But still the stores were still open. And everything was still there. The second they started uh, uh, blowing the next one, then they used to take out the trisim, they used to close the stores. But still there was fire on the, there was still the food on the kira and everything. Once the third one came, they took it off. Then they used to do atmana, then they used to light the candles. Uh, you remember in, uh, in Morocco, or also, you remember, I think if I remember correctly, in Morocco, on Erev Shabbat, they used to go around closing the stores as well, correct? Babachaki, are you there? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, you guys remember? No. How, how would they close the stores? Okay. I don't remember. Binyamin, you remember how they used to close the stores? Uh, by us, uh, well, you know, there is a, there used to be like a, like a sound of the shofar one, one two time, and everybody will close. That's what I remember. Oh, okay, very good. So that was, I, I, I don't remember if it was with the shofar in Morocco, but I remember also that they used to go around closing the stores. I remember that. And uh, well, in my time, they, were, they used to have a sound in the, in the Jewish quarter, and everybody knows that. Okay, first one, between one and the other one is like five minutes. 
something. Ah, like very good. That. Okay, very good. So it was like two different ones. Okay. Yeah. So then it says, okay, the next. So again, it's kia throughout kia, and then they stop. So I'm going to be Yosef Rechadin, it says of Yosef Rechadin, Shamati, Shimbal Lealik, Achar Shesh Tkiot Malik. If you wanted to do the Alaka after the six Tkiot, you could also be Malik. Sharena Tnucha Chamim Shiur, Lechazer Na Knesset Lolik Shofro Veto. But they used to still give a little bit of a time for the Chazana Knesset, which used to be blowing the Shofar, in order to take the Shofar back to his house. So therefore, even when he finished the Shesh Tkiot, you still had another two, three minutes in order that he could take it to his house, so therefore you were able to light the candle still. Amarlo, so they said, he's one second. In Kenef, so on, So then now it's going to be a problem, because now everyone's going to say, ah, he's probably still taking it to his house. I can light the candles, and then you get into a problem. So he says, Ela, but rather, Makom sano yeshlo chazan kretz v'rosh kago. He used to have a place, a private place, in the, in the top of the roof. Shesham and Yeshua, they used to put it there. But you're not allowed to carry, not the shofar, or not the horn, the trumpets, about after Knesset the Shabbat, so it used to be immediately. Ah, says the Gemara, "Vatani Shofar into the throne of the Tzitzit." I thought we said that no, that you are allowed to carry the Shofar, but you're not allowed to carry the the Chatzutzro, the trumpets. So I'm going to have Yosef. So Yosef, like I just don't question. Kam biyachid, kam betzibur. One is a yachid, one is a tzibur, which means the yachid, right, is not muktze. So therefore, you could use the the Shofar of the yachid, but the one of the tzibur you're not allowed to. So Amar Avayi Bayi says, "What is it going to be doing it for yachid? What are you going to do with it already?" So it says, you could put water inside of it because you know you could put water inside of the shofar and bring it to your house, right? So that water, that's what it's going to be used for, right? Latinok for a child, with tzibur nami. So too, the tzibur also is going to be fitting for a chazil gemel latinokani for for a tinokani. Okay, fine. We'll do another. We'll continue, right? We'll continue.